Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It Newsers, the toy and action figure news desk here on the Pop Culture Network. Now, I know last week we said, hey, it was going to be this one-of-a-kind time thing where Kill and Pixel Dan both had scheduling conflicts and they would not be able to do It figures, so just for one time, we were going to take it over for the news desk. But hey, guess what? Schedules are still crazy. Uh, actually, it looks like there are going to be some changes coming to the Pop Culture Network. I can't really uh, you know, tell you everything because I don't even know myself. Uh, but apparently, uh, you know, work schedules have changed, daycare schedules have changed, uh, kids are taking swimming lessons and ballet classes and, uh, you know, whatever. So uh, things are just going to be kind of crazy for a while as we try to figure out where things can settle in on the schedule. And you're going to see some switching of hosts, you're going to see shows change to different days, Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria, but, you know, we will soldier on. So, I just threw up a post on the message board telling people that, you know, it figures probably wasn't going to happen. Did they still, you know, want something or did they just want to wait a week and figure out what was going on? And they said, no, go ahead and do it, Dirt, because you're better than nothing. So, hmm. All right, then. First up, let's talk about... Teenage Alien Intergalactic Ninja Turtles, or Taint, as I like to call them now. Michael Bay has come forward to say that he's working, of course, on the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. But this time, they're not mutants. They're aliens. So anyway, uh, just as you probably reacted, that's what the uh, fan reaction has been. Michael Bay did send out this statement saying, Fans need to take a breath and chill. They have not read the script. Our team is working closely with one of the original creators of Ninja Turtles to help expand and give a more complex backstory. Relax. We are including everything that made you become fans in the first plane. We're just building a richer world. Signed, Michael. Of course, he didn't know Kevin Eastman's name. He just knew that he was some guy who originally worked on the Turtles. So he just said, hey, we're working with some guy. Uh, but so far, fan reaction has been incredibly negative, and we'll just have to wait and see. But as far as other toy lines go, I am just now starting to get back into Transformers because Transformers Prime figures are out, and most of those do not look like Bayformers. So I've actually been buying a few. If you follow me on Twitter, you've seen my posts about how I'm going crazy because I'm actually buying Transformers figures. It's nuts. As, as they move farther away from Michael Bay, I am turning into a fan of Transformers again. Hopefully, Michael Bay does not kill this franchise for me. Up next, uh, Rise of the Beast Series 1, which was funded on Kickstarter, was canceled. Um, originally, what happened is people just got a cancellation notice, and a lot of angry people jumped on Kickstarter going, Hey, wh uh, what the heck's going on? People like yours truly <clears throat> got a little hot on her collar and said some things as it turns out uh the creator of rise of the beast john Karras, i think that's how you pronounce his name he found out that the factory could not produce the figures uh the way they originally said they would uh, he wanted them to be muscle size and they were going to be bigger than that they couldn't make them that small size and so instead of giving an explanation that this wasn't going to happen and then you know calling it into the end to the project uh, he just went ahead and canceled it, and then when everybody started freaking out, he's like, oh, well, you know, by the way, they weren't going to be able to do it, and so maybe it just proves that Kickstarter needs a PR firm. Up next, we've got Dead Nazi Fun. Uh, if anybody has seen the movie Frozen Dead, it's about Nazis that, uh, you know, come back uh, as zombies as part of the big zombie apocalypse. Well, Hot Toys is going to have this kick-ass figure coming out. It will be $349.99. It will have a $35 non-refundable deposit for your pre-order. Um, and then basically, um, they do have some sort of payment plans available if you can't afford the $350 right off they'll work with you uh, but it does come with some interchangeable heads uh, comes with some extra accessories uh, you can change his outfit a little bit so overall nice looking figure it's from Hot Toys it's going to be great um, but super super expensive now Hot Toys also announced this new uh, facial feature that they're calling their um, let's see interchangeable face t faces technique and much like how they instituted the rolling eye feature that allows it to look from side to side naturally, they've now uh, started this series. Uh, it's going to be in the new Batman figures, in the Robocop figures, and certain other figures down the line. And basically, instead of coming up with whole new head sculpts, 
characters that have a mask on, they can just swap out the mouth section, put a new mouth section on, and then it kind of lowers the price a little bit. So there's something to look forward to for all you Hot Toys fans. Uh, one last piece of news here, if you go into Toys R Us and pick up one of their little flyers off the kiosk by the door, you can get a coupon for $4 off your $10 purchase, which is actually a really good deal. Uh, so uh, only one coupon at a time, there are no figures at the $10 price point, so you're going to have to buy two Legion, or you're going to have to buy a Commander class and, and pay, you know, like 13 and get a couple bucks back or whatever. However, the math works out. Math, not my strong suit. But regardless, pretty good deal. Make sure you pick up one of those coupons if you're picking up some Prime figures. Now, for the fan corner this week, uh, Cavalier Chris on our message board says, I was wondering if anyone at PCN has watched Comic Book Men on AMC. If so, what have you thought of it, and has there been anything that blew you away? Well, quite frankly, I watched the show once. I will never watch it again. Uh, besides the fact that I don't like Kevin Smith in general as a human being, uh, he's a pretty pathetic human. I like his movies, Mallrats, Clerks, you know, Jane Slot, Bob Strike Back are great, but any show that's going to be about him, I don't, I don't want to give it my time. And the show that I watched just absolutely, you know, uh, it. As someone who works in a store that sells comics and has worked in stores that sell comics since I was in high school, uh, watching that show really kind of makes me cringe, and I really want nothing to do with that show. But as far as stuff on the show, he says um, there are so many shows similar to it on the cable dial, so if it goes away, he wouldn't shed a tear. Uh, but coolest moments of the show, someone came in selling their $6 million man figures complete in box. Um, also, someone had the 30th anniversary Avengers poster done and signed by George Perez featuring every Avengers assembled. So there are some neat things that come into shows like that. And it is neat to see what people will sell. Uh, you know, people come into Killing Enterprises and they'll have uh, complete mask figures. Uh, we had sets of Micro Machines, uh, the play sets. If you remember, they had those play sets. Uh, you know, the airport and the parking garage and the gas station and the suburban house and all that stuff. They were complete play sets in the boxes everything we had people come in with you know all sorts of classic uh, brave star and thundercats and we had a silver hawks uh, electronic toothbrush holder and actually it was pretty cool uh if it wasn't you know uh, as expensive as it was i may have actually bought that one but yeah working in a store like that you do see some cool stuff come through from time to time but uh that is one show i will not watch Next up, Teltran35 said that Stealth Voltron that I spoke of last week is much better looking than the crappy Panini version. Well, I did a little search and I found Panini as the company that, you know, of course makes the stickers that you peel off and put into the books and you try to collect, but I couldn't find any toy that they made. Uh, so if there's a Panini Voltron toy that's made, let me know. Now, I'm wondering if maybe he's confused with the Jollibee Voltron figure. Uh, Jolly Bee is a fast food chain in the Philippines, I believe. They released a Voltron figure. I've been trying for like a year and a half, whatever, trying to get one, and I just can't seem to get my hands on the set. But apparently it was pretty cool. Uh, of course, not as cool as a $225, you know, anniversary set Voltron that you're going to buy. But, you know, it may have been all right. Um, but maybe that's what you were talking about instead of Panini. But if there was a Panini Voltron figure, please let me know. Also, he says, I got the Star Trek play sets and bought extra figures and customized them. Oh, by the way, Hasbro bought the rights to the Star Trek toys. Right, which leads right into Austin 316ification said, Hasbro now has the Star Trek license. The first series of figures, ships, and role-playing items will be released next year to coincide with the release of the next Star Trek movie. Which, as a matter of fact, when I thought back about it, we had talked about it here on the news desk. They released these photos uh, from Toy Fair where it showed Creo Star Trek figures as the first announcement from Hasbro, along with the fact that they would be continuing on with the movie franchise. So it's one of those things that, yeah, okay, we go back two months. I, in fact, even talked about it, and somehow I completely blanked out about it when it came time to sit and discuss it here on the show. I apologize. My bad. 
Well, that's actually it for this week. Um, you know, uh, we didn't have a whole lot of fan corner because we didn't actually start a fan corner thread, so we just had a couple questions went up at the last moment. But, uh, you know, as far as when the next episode is of It Figures or It Newsers or whatever, um, I can't really tell you exactly when it's coming, where it'll be, uh, who else going to be on it. Uh, like I said, things are kind of up in the air. But if you go to popculturenetwork.com, join the forums, you can leave questions and comments, and we will cover them the next time we all get together to do one of those shows. You can also leave us a voicemail message at area code 217-953-4025. And don't forget, you can find me on Twitter at uh, dirt underscore PCN or Facebook facebook.com slash VG losers. Always send me an email dirt at popculturenetwork.com. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, it's Killin. I'm here to discuss a new show coming every Monday on the Pop Culture Network. It is the Video Game Lizard Show. Every week we'll discuss the news relating to video games. We'll talk about some releases and have a short discussion on whatever random topic we think is relevant that week. It's going to start myself and, of course, I'm not Dirk. So be sure to check us out on bglosers.com, part of the Pop Culture Network. Yay!